ChatGPT has been everywhere in recent months, and so I thought I would take a look at a few uses for it in Google Sheets. First, we'll take a look at how we create the add-in for GPT in Google Sheets, then we'll work our way through four examples using different GPT formula, and stick around for the last one, where we'll ask ChatGPT to write a formula based on a question and see how it does. Let me know in the comments below if you've used any of these and if you found them useful. Let's head over to the laptop and get started. I've opened up Google Sheets and the first thing we need to do is enable the ChatGPT extension within it. In order to do that, come up to Extensions and go to Add-ons and Get Add-ons. That will take you to a new window. Within this window, we can search GPT. And the second one down in this example is the GPT for Sheets and Docs. Click that one. The one we need is GPT for Google Sheets and Docs. So click that and then go through the install process. This will now tell you where to find GPT Sheets within your Google Docs. Click next and then done. You can see over on the right hand side that the extension has now opened a new window. This gives us more information and usability within our sheets. For example, we can come down here and take a look at all of the different formula that we can use within our GPT sheets. If you click on the little arrow there, it will expand it and then give an example and any documentation that goes along with that formula. If we come back, you can see that we don't have an API key currently. So in order to be able to use GPT within Google Sheets, we need to set to that. So if we click here, we need to come down to the need a new API key and click the link there. That will open a new window. It's very important that you don't hand out your API key to anybody. For this example, we're going to create a new one, create a new secret key, create it, copy that and press done. Then come back across to ChatGPT and then paste your API key in that box and press save API key. This will now enable us to use more functionality within this new window pane. We're now going to take a look at how we can actually use GPT within our Google Sheets. I've created four tabs along the bottom and we'll take a look at each in turn. This first one, we're going to create some dummy sales data for our cupcake business. We're going to use GPT table to create our dummy sales data. Our prompt is cell A1 here, what we want to achieve. And then the head is our headers. So this is going to be this row here. We're going to close the parentheses and press enter. That will then load us some dummy sales data. And you can see that it's loaded a few rows. We know these are all cupcakes, but we want a bit of variety in there. So let's change the product header to flavor and press enter. This will reload the data. And now you can see we've got something a bit more interesting. That it's got different flavors of cupcakes rather than just cupcakes down. We could probably also add a few more rows of data in here. So rather than create some sales data, we'll type in create 15 rows of. And you can see now it's given us more rows of data. The next use case of GPT is to try and clean up some of our text. In here, we've got some comments about our cakes, but our boss doesn't want those emojis in there. We're going to use the GPT underscore edit. This is our text, and the task is going to be remove the emojis. And you can see it's removed the emoji from there. We're going to double click the fill handle and bring that formula down and you can see that it's removed the emojis from all of our comments. In this next example, we want to complete this table to return CPI percentage rates for the US and the UK for those years. We're going to use the normal GPT function in order to do this, but we're going to also use the concat function in order to combine the two text strings. So equals GPT and then concat 
our first text string is going to be this up here. This is going to be our prompt and we need to fix that. I have left a space after the word for, so we don't have to use an additional text string within this. The second one is going to be uh, this cell for the US, and we're just going to fix the row by pressing F4 twice. Close the concat function, then comma, the value is going to be our year. So this cell here, and we're going to fix the column in this instance by pressing F4 three times, close the function out, and you can see it's returned to that. Then we're just going to copy and paste that across the rest of them. As you can see, it's pulled through all of the values and completed the table. In this last example, we're going to take a look at how we can get GPT to look at a set of data and create us a formula based on our requirements. You can either come across and generate formula within the generate formula section by adding the prompt in there. We're going to use the GPT underscore code function to do that straight into our sheet. Equals GPT underscore code. Our task, create a formula which sums sales for product. B and customer three. And the language is going to be our table. Close the parentheses. That now creates us a sum ifs function, which we know is correct. And it looks fine. So what we're going to do is we're going to come across to our window here and we're going to expand the GPT formula controls section. And down here, we're going to replace the GPT formula in the selection because we've selected that cell. That's going to get rid of the GPT code and replace that with the formula that it's written. We're going to remove the apostrophe before the equals and press enter. Then that returns us the value we're expecting. I think that the GPT integration within Google Sheets is really interesting, which I hope you saw in those examples. In my experience so far at least, it feels like there is still a long way to go as I found issues on load times and the amount of data it can load as sometimes it just stops. But what we need to remember is this tech is still being developed at lightning speed so I can't wait to see what developments come in the future. I really hope you found this video helpful and if you did please give it a like and if you haven't subscribed yet I'd really appreciate it. See you next time.